Scott Pilgrim vs. World is a movie. No shit! That came out in August 25th, 2010 and is nearing on 13 years of age. And perhaps because I am close to Scott's age in the film, or maybe because re-listening to Black Sheep for the first time in who knows how long gave me an unbelievable sense of melancholy and or dread for my future. Who knows? But yeah, I rewatched it recently and it got me thinking on not only how well the film actually aged as media and also how it's retained its sort of cult film status despite bombing at the box office yet still having a large following as the years go by. I think there is some things that come into plain part of why it failed. Number one is it was just the wrong time to come out. I reckon if it came out two years later, along with, say, The Avengers, which you have to thank Marvel for really broadening the comics and geeky genre it represents. I feel like it would have flourished during that. And uh, number two is the marketing was horrible, from what I remember anyway. Granted, I was a kid and perhaps that's influenced my opinion on the marketing, but I distinctly remember people not being too excited about seeing it or not fancying it because of the marketing, yet everyone who saw it said it was good and to that I would agree, it is rather well made. A large part of that is in thanks to Edgar Wright who has made such work as the Cornetto trilogy, you know, Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz and The World's End. His style of visual comedy and storytelling was a perfect fit for the movie. This cast is one of the best before they were famous casts you can think of, with Michael Cera, who was going into his prime as far as acting goes, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, who I loved in Sky High, and Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, by the way, just felt like stating that. Macaulay Cul- oh sorry, I mean Kieran Culkin, I love him really. Chris Evans, holy shit, Captain America? And another childhood crush, Anna Kendrick, I love you so much, please marry me. By the way, there is more, but I don't want to waste too much time, so I'll just put up a slate here. And also we cannot forget about the person who coined the comic, Brian Lee O'Malley. Now, moving on, we start off with learning that Scott, who is 22, is dating a 70 year old. FBI, open up! Yeah, I get it's legal, hell, it's legal here in sunny old Scotland, but as pointed in the movie by Kim, who is an angel and can step on me, please. <laughs> But it's also a bit of a dickish move on Scott's part, as she is a rebound only there to try and fill the gap his ex left. Though we do see that they get on pretty well with the wombo combos at the arcade, and that they are like each other well enough. A bit more on nice part anyway. But his relationship is about to blow by as a new challenger approaches, in the form of Ramona Flowers, who Scott can't get out of his head like that one Kylie Minogue song. Anyway, he meets her at a party, as weird, then he orders off of Amazon and scores a date that's not a date but turns into one. We learn there is, in fact, more than one type of tea, a Sam and mint green tea is the best, any other opinion is wrong, and Scott doesn't get sick. <laughs> Loser. Anyway, because Scott's a coward and afraid of taking responsibility for his actions, he doesn't break up with knives and is two time in the girls who meet at a sex bob gig. Only luckily for Scott, nice faints when all is about to be revealed. But now he has to deal with Ramona's first ex evil boyfriend, oh sorry, evil exes. We get an excellent fight with great visuals, a funny singing routine that has left Anna Kendrick baffled and more. Anyway, we learn that Scott will have to face all the other exes if he wants to be with Ramona. After this, Scott finally grows a pair breaks up with Knives, who wants revenge on Ramona because it's her fault. Ah yes, the teenage angst is strong with this one. Scott goes on a date with Ramona and fights Captain America before doing a little trolling and getting him to die by not listening to Tony Hawk and bailing on a bad move. Also, he gets invited to do a gig with his band from his ex, Envy, who also just so happens to be Brie Larson, fun fact, and another evil ex is also in the band. I feel like the song that gets played during this, Black Sheep, is a perfect song for movie, Scott. I know that there is a difference between movie and comic, as is with all adaptions, and because it also wasn't near finished when the movie came out, being a volume away from ending. But yeah, I think it really does encompass his inability to be accountable for his actions, and the difference it shows between Scott and Ramona, as she has accepted she was horrible to her exes, and is trying to be better, unlike Scott, who until the end doesn't even admit he's been shitty. 
Anyway, Scott fights Todd, uses his wits and gets saved by the vegan police, which I love, and then we get the best fight of the film with Ramona and Roxy, before Scott defeats her via orgasm. This is not a joke, by the way. And the bitterness Scott feels for the problems of Ramona's exes start getting to him and causes him to lash out at her and they fight with her eventually just saying that she's leaving and they should maybe split. We get a sad angry Scott who beats the Katayanagi twins, I apologise for the butchering of that there, and after learning that Ramona is back with Gideon, he does also get an extra life from this event that I'm sure will come in handy. Anyway, Scott chooses to fight for his love after a pep top from Wallace who I've neglected to mention, he's also one of the best characters. He gets the power of love but is ultimately killed and goes to the slipstream, or whatever that space is called, has a heart to heart with Ramona, learns that Gideon is controlling her via a microphone chip in her head, uses his extra life after having the power of self respect which I think means not only respecting himself but his lack of regard for others and how he has made them feel to this point come into play as he finally does right by his friends, fights Gideon, mans up and tells Ramona and knives about him cheating and faces himself as Bleep Scott. Yeah, I ain't risking saying that now and being perceived incorrectly, so we're calling him Negative Scott. Ramona chooses to go and leave, but with urging from knives, Scott is continued. Oh, I said continued. I'm going to leave this in. Scott is convinced to pursue her, and what happens with them is left up to chance as we leave, seeing that at the very least they are going to try again. I think this movie is great. I think how it depicts romance is fun but also very truthful. Sometimes we get so blinded by thinking about how the other person is that we don't consider how we are treating them as a person. And I love that it is highlighted by Ramona and Scott admitting that, whilst the exes are in the wrong for how they are behaving and acting, both of them haven't exactly been the best and have also been toxic to their exes. I like Scott's journey to being better, I think the characters are fantastic, Kim and Wallace are a highlight and even more so in the comic from what I understand, and I will check that out when I clear up some of my reading catalogue. But this film has a sense of melancholy for me now. Maybe it is because I am of a similar age to Scott in the movie and I can relate to the lack of accountability. Though my issues aren't in relationships, it's other factors. Without getting personal or too deep, I think it comes from knowing that I'm growing and also want to mature as a person, yet feeling an inability to go through with it. After all, it's worry and not wanting to cause issues that ultimately lead to the problems for Scott and I feel I'm in a similar boat. Though there's always time to grow and change and accept what's coming, it's just getting there that's hard. Anyway, this has been my thoughts on Scott Pilgrim vs the World and a slight tangent on my part that no one's gonna give a shit about. I would give this movie a 7 out of 10 and recommend you check it out and I'll see you in the next video which is looking like it's going to be a thought or analysis on Serial Experiment Slain, which I am currently watching as of the 8th of the 5th, 2023. Anyway, peace out.